Do you know anything about the role of creatine in mitochondria? Because I know when I'm taking creatine, I just, I feel stronger. Obviously there's um, creatine used a lot in like bodybuilding world, but there's got to be a mitochondrial mechanism there because I'll tell you, I feel like I can lift, you know, at least a good 10, 20 pounds heavier on particular exercises with creatine in my system. Yeah. I mean, creatine definitely has an effect on growth hormone, improving growth hormone. Thus, that will help with muscle. Creatine is like instant energy for the muscle. So it's it's there. It's ready to be used right away in that first 10 seconds or five, five to 10 seconds of muscle use or like explosion movement through that muscle. So that definitely plays a role in muscle. Um, I'm not sure how it plugs in 100%. Because really, you know, with uh, ATP, right, and the mitochondrial function, if you look inside the mitochondria, you have glycolysis. And then you have the electron transport chain. Or I'm sorry, you have the Krebs cycle, citric acid cycle, and then that plugs into the electron transport chain. So glycolysis, that's going to be ut utilizing the carbohydrate um, in the muscle, right? Glycogen in the muscle, fast, immediate source. I think creatine plugs into that top part. And then you have the Krebs cycle, citric acid cycle, where B vitamins, magnesium, all these different things kind of plug into that. And with the with the citric acid or Krebs cycle, the, the to mean the same thing. Essentially, they're grabbing hydrogens, right? So they're, they're, it's, it's a reducing agent. So it's just grabbing, re reduce, reduction is a gain in electrons. And so you have NAD goes around and it grabs NADH. So you get three NADH and I think one FADH2. So you have FADH and it grabs another hydrogen and that becomes FADH2. And so it's grabbing all these hydrogens and then it's essentially bringing those hydrogens downstream into the electron uh, transport chain and beta beta fatty acid oxidation there. And so you, I think you generate, was it 36 to 39 ATP through the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain? Unless you're in like a chronic fatigue state, this cell danger response, and I think you're spitting out something low, like two, maybe three ATP. I've read about this cell danger response. They just call it CDR in the literature, but it talks about how the cell danger response, which could be initiated by trauma or a car wreck or even mold exposure or tick-borne illnesses or viruses. There's a lot of, you know, Epstein-Barr, you'll see the link between like mono and chronic fatigue. It's said that these people are in this state of just a low power output, where even if you have the nutrients, you're just not generating the ATP. It was some, I don't know if it was Kalish or somebody that, that you and I had looked into where there was a talk on this about how the, the, the ATP was literally in the single digits, the low single digit output in some of these states. So the message here is that for people that have chronic fatigue, you got to realize there is a mitochondrial component to this. Why don't we talk about testing a little bit? The main thing that you and I are going to look at is going to be the organic acids. I know there are some other tests out there. I'll admit I've had clients send them to me, such as the mito swab. I've not run the mito swab personally. I don't know enough about it to speak on it much, but I'll just say that it does exist. I believe it is a a mouth swab, and it's probably looking at just a couple generic markers in the saliva. But we like to use the organic acids test because, as you mentioned, there's the Krebs cycle metabolites on there. We can look into the uh, succinate or what some people call succinic acid. You've got the malic acid. You've got fumarate. There's other markers on there. And we, we see when people have toxin exposure, like I said in the beginning, the heavy metals, the mold, the pesticides, we'll see those mitochondrial markers go up. And the higher the numbers go, generally, the more tired someone is because that indicates more damage to that Krebs cycle. So so the oat is is huge. And then obviously, we'll look at stool too. Now, the stool test, you don't measure like the stool test we're running. You're not measuring mitochondrial function, but I look at it in a roundabout way, meaning if you have all these gut infections producing toxins, that could be damaging mitochondria as well. So we know that when we clear the gut out, we see the mitochondrial function improve. 100%.